Um, it is Thursday morning and um, we are live in Bethel for our daily devotional from Luke. I'm just watching this twirly twirly, aha, there we go. Hey everyone, we are live in Bethel Baptist Church for our daily devotionals in Luke. Um, I'm sharing with you today from Luke chapter 9 verses 28 to 36. Um, it's a very famous passage, it's a passage called the Transfiguration. Um, it's a little bit weird. Um, some of the Bible can be a bit weird sometimes. This is one of those strange things that happen in the Bible that we don't see happen an awful lot in real life, but um, the Bible is real. Ah, hi. Hi from Tanzania. Chris was here. He'd teach me some Swahili. Uh, I know Rafiki is friend. So, hi Rafiki. Um, Cool, I'll get started in a minute. I'll just wait for a few seconds to see if anyone else is coming on. Um, not that it matters because this video will, will be saved so we can watch it another time if we want to. But uh, we're sharing from Luke chapter 9 uh, verses 28 to 36 um, and it's headed the, ah, I'm guessing Chris, that means uh, hello, Jambo. Uh, where was I? Luke chapter 9 verses 28 to 36. The Transfiguration. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John and James with him and went up onto a mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as flashing light. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendour, talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring in fulfilment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy. But when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and did not tell anyone at that time what they had seen. Uh, so like I said, a bit of a strange passage, uh, not your everyday occurrences, but then life with Jesus never is, is it? We've seen uh, feedings of 5,000s and healings already in Luke. Um, but just before this passage, the bit that John shared with us yesterday, we see the disciples uh, hearing for the first time that Jesus uh, is going to die. Now that's not what they expected. Uh, they were probably confused. They probably had doubts. Uh, they were probably worried. Um, and I think that this next bit, this transfiguration, uh, can be seen as a bit of encouragement for the disciples because they expected their Messiah to come in glory, to come in splendour, to save them, to, to save their country, to save their people. And Jesus has just told them that, that he's going to die and that they'll probably die for him too. Um, now that's a bit confusing for them. It's not what they expected. So then flip to the transfiguration and, uh, and Jesus is saying, look guys, God's saying, look, it's okay. Jesus is me. Jesus has got the glory of God on him. It's going to be okay. It's going to be amazing. So the human Jesus, the Jesus that's going to die, he still has the glory of God. Um, and for Peter and John and James, when they were there, I mean, it says they were sleepy to start with, which means they probably missed the conversation going on, but they could still see the glory of God. Um, now for us, what does that mean? We're not going to see a transfiguration, um, unlikely, but I think for us, we can look at it. Jesus was about to step out into a new part of his ministry. He was about to step out um, in the way towards where he was going to die. He knew that. Uh, he knew where he had to go. doesn't mean it was easy. Um, it doesn't mean he wanted to, because who wants to die? Uh, I don't think even Jesus did really as a human. Um, but God comes to him and God says, do you know what? This is still part of my mission. That stuff that Moses started, the stuff that Elijah started, that's the mission. You're on the right path. You're doing the right thing. And hey, who knows what Moses and Elijah said to Jesus? They might have been encouraging him. Do you know what? It's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. But I want to encourage you to keep going. Um, and that's what God is saying to us. He's saying, do you know what? It might be hard, what I'm calling you to next. It might be difficult, but you've got to keep going. You've got to keep going. And those disciples, I said they were sleepy. The Bible told us they were a bit sleepy. Um, and I think sometimes we can be a bit sleepy, not um, you know, actually sleepy, but sleepy in our lives, kind of thinking, oh, we'll just carry on, we'll just muddle through, it's going to be okay. 
Um, you know, we can just pretend maybe that we're faking it a bit. We can pretend God's real. But actually, God is real, and we've got to listen to his voice. The disciples had their own idea about the Messiah and about what he was going to do. But in this moment, God is saying, no, this is it. You know, this is my son in whom I am pleased. Uh, so I want us to go away from today encouraged. You know, God wants us to keep going. We're on the right path. We're on mission, but also to be awake. We need to listen out for what God is saying. We need to listen out uh, for where he's calling us. And we need to look out for his glory because it is all around us. Okay, I hope that made sense. Uh, see you all soon.